All right, so just about every time I post up to Instagram or Facebook about the pie cut work that I do here in the shop, some of this stuff you see behind me here, there's always a handful, and I really mean a handful of people that always just, you know, send the messages or post up in the comments, and I get back to every single one of them, but it's all about how do I start, where do I go, do I do this, do I do that, do I do that, do I go there, their heads are exploding because it seems so complicated, but it's not. Take a deep breath. It's easy. We're going to break it all down right now. You need to know three very important things about pie cuts. Three things that you need to pay attention to and learn about in this episode in order to follow along. They are the assembly angle, the transition angle, and the cut angles. We're going to go over all three of them right now. Now, what is the assembly angle? The assembly angle is all pieces of pie, every single piece of pie in the assembly to create whatever angle it is that you are creating. All pieces of pie to create the angle. In this case, you're seeing a 90 degree angle, all of these pieces of pie to create this assembly of 90 degrees, that number is your assembly angle. Next, you need to know the transition angle, how much Transition does one piece of pie provide? One piece of pie, only one. How much is, uh, transition, if one piece of pie is added, how much transition angle is that? That number you also need to know. Next, you need to know about the cut angles. This cut and this cut. That is two cuts on each side of this piece of pie. Those two cuts are the cut angles. You need to know the cut angles so that you can get the transition angle, so you can get the assembly angle. Those are the ones that you need to know about. That sounds complicated already. Follow along, I got you. Now you need to know about the two common methods of computing your pie cuts, or all of these angles are to figure them all out. This is where it gets confusing to many people, but there are two very common ways to do it. Neither one of them is wrong. It's really up to you to decide if you want to do it, if you're comfortable with it, if you like it, or whichever one works for you. But they are the forward way of computing your angles and the reverse way of computing your angles. Very, very simple. We'll start with the forward angle. Now, on the first episode of Pie and Lobster Cuts, I mentioned there are two common angles used in pie cut fabrication. They are four and a half degrees and nine degrees. Now, those are cut angles. Very, very important. They are cut angles. They are not transition angles. They are cut angles. That means that each piece of pie has this angle on each side of it. So the formula to calculate your transition angle is cut angle times two. So if you have four and a half degrees on each side of the pie, because four and a half degrees is your cut angle, multiply by two, you have a nine degree transition. Now, how many pieces does it take to make whatever angle you're mating or you're wanting to go to? This is typically what's memorized. So I know that I have to have five pieces in order to make uh, 45 degrees. I have to have 10 of them in order to make 90 degrees. And everything in between, I already know how to calculate all that. I can always put that in my head very, very quickly. Get 60 degrees, you can get all of it. So remember, the forward method of computing, cut angle times two equals transition angles. The transition angles added up make the most common assembly angles found in the pie cut fabrication world. They're the most popular way of doing this, the most common way of doing this, and they're most memorized because they're all based off of the four and a half degree cut or the nine degree cut. But there's your angle for the forward method. Now let's move to the reverse method of computing. Start with the assembly angle, whatever angle that is. Now divide that by the number of pieces of pie in the system, however many pieces of pie you want. The quotient of that will become your transition angle. Take your transition angle, divide that by two, and you get your cut angles. Each piece of pie will have to have those cut angles on each side in order to create the transition angle, which will then create the assembly angle. But what do you need to fill in there? I don't know. Now, the reverse method is usually the least common use. And why? Well, it's because you have to actually figure everything out beforehand, and if you're off by a little bit, then you have to go back and redo it. And the numbers are always subject to change. You're always changing the amount of angles. Let's just say, for example, that you wanted a 90 degree assembly, 
and uh, you wanted to do, let's say, I don't know, uh, six pieces of pie to make that 90 degree assembly, right? Take 90, divide that by six, you get 15 degrees of your transition angle. That 15 degrees, divide that by two, you have seven and a half degree cuts on each piece of pie. Seven and a half times two equals 15, times six equals 90 degrees. But what if you, uh, I don't know, maybe you needed 80 degrees instead of 90? Well, now you gotta go back and redo all of the math and redo all of this. And if you already cut those, you just wasted a whole bunch of material. So again, the reverse method is the least common used because it requires you to figure out everything beforehand and there's a possibility of error to be created out of it. Versus if you already knew the angles you wanted or you already calculated everything based on the forward system and created and cut all of those pieces of pie, all you have to do is assemble rather than try to figure it all out beforehand. So whichever method works for you, use it. It doesn't necessarily matter because there is no right or wrong within this system. All it is is just a couple of numbers punched together to create whatever result you want to create. In this case, it's pie cuts. It's very, very simple. Make sure you have the formulas there. Now, if you have any more questions about this, drop them in the comments box below there. You can also email me on the fabricationseries.com website. Hit me up on facebook.com slash the fabricator series. Hit me up on Instagram at the.fabricator. You can message me just about anywhere, DM, PM, all the rest of that good stuff. And make sure you check out other episodes on here. Click any one of these and they'll take you right over there to it. I want to thank you guys again for watching as always. Don't forget to subscribe to the Fabrication Series YouTube channel and I'll see you guys on the next episode.